my friends, and welcome to Coffee with the Pastors. I'm Pastor Joe. Pastor Cliff. And we're coming to you live from the Henry Aaron studio uh, right here in Ormond Beach, uh, Studio 44, uh, recognizing the most uh, talented man uh, ever to walk on a ball field. And uh, encourage you to look up some of his statistics and some of his life story, a true ambassador for the game. Uh, I believe we have some some fireworks because yesterday was the 4th of July and uh, we love our country. Um, John Adams was convinced it was going to be July 2nd was going to be the big day, but it uh, turned out to be the 4th before anybody got around to it. But uh, anyway, we had a big celebration. Big celebration, so, right. So we'll give you some of that in the background. Um, Cliff, you want to tell them about our sponsor? Yeah, Beautiful Gate Cafe. You've, if you have been watching us, you know that uh, that is our sponsor. Uh, this is where this program began, and in, in one of the, in fact, the Mexican room there in the Beautiful Gate Cafe. Corey Hope, the pro owner, proprietor, uh, she's just back from Mexico. Yep. Uh, proceeds from her, from the Beautiful Gate Coffee Shop, go to support missions. And if you'll go in there and look, she's got a great big world of the map. She's got stickers on everywhere that she is working and has uh, supported. They, uh, in Mexico, they were working with children and uh, blessing pastors. And, and just doing street yeah. evangelism. Right. They were just out talking to people because Corey's fluent in Spanish and Arabic, yeah. and I mean, who isn't? But, oh, yeah, you know. I mean, you know, we taught her everything she knows. Uh, great place. Uh, go in and ask for the triple pig. We won't explain it, just ask for it, and uh, some hibiscus tea, and you'll have a great, great breakfast. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Your arteries will yeah. possibly clog up at the moment, but give me a call because I've got a good heart surgeon too. Yeah, we keep him on call. So that day, our sponsor, Jerry Wells, our executive producer, uh, he makes us look good and thin. Uh, and all the things we need, I think this Well, week, the fireworks, he keeps the eyes on the, the fireworks exactly. so they don't pay any attention to us. Exactly. I think this week I asked for a ponytail, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Joe, well, where are we going this Well, week? we get to be in Psalm 24, all and right. uh, Cliff, this is one of my favorites, um, and I'll tell you why. Tell me. Well, back in the 80s, uh, I was in youth ministry, and there was a movement, I think it came out of London, came out of Europe somewhere, but it was to have Jesus parades. And it was kind of unique. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I think there was, you know, there was parades for other crazy stuff, which there is now. And somebody said, well, why don't we do a Jesus parade? And uh, so floats were made by different churches, different Christians, different organizations. Uh, worship music was played uh, through the streets. And it was actually fun. I did it in Jacksonville a couple of times. But about that time... Uh, the end of Psalm 24, uh, I, I don't know who did the song, but they came out with the song, Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. And uh, that song was kind of like in my head during the, those parades, and so that just became a, kind of a theme for me. Yeah. Uh, but that's not where it starts, so start yeah. us from the beginning. Great psalm. Well, from what I understand, this psalm actually was written by David when he finally began to move the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem. Mm. Uh, it, the Philistines had had it, and uh, it caused them a lot of trouble. If you just read there in uh, 1 Kings, I believe it is, uh, the story of it. So they said, come get it. David finally got it. They brought it into the city. There was a lot of fanfare, and, and this psalm comes out of that entrance but it has a lot of implications now. Uh, I did some research. Oh, you have notes? I have notes. Man. Uh, you can remember, I have notes. Uh, when the temple was built, they had a daily liturgy in the temple. Yes. So Monday, Psalms 48. Tuesday, Psalms 82. Wednesday, Psalms 94. Thursday, Psalm 81. Friday, Psalm 93. Saturday, Psalm 92. These were sung. And on the first day of the week, they sang Psalm 24. I did not know that. Which goes, when you talk about the ancient doors and the king, imagine a dark grave. 
and on the first day of the week, this giant stone is moving away. So it is has messianic content. Sure. And they sang that in the temple on the first day of the week, which Very was pointing right to the resurrection well, of Jesus. Well, but Christ. listen to how it starts. So the yeah. first, so the first day of every week would start this way: the earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, right. the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. So it starts off, which again, a great Jewish theme. It, look, ain't none of it yours. Right, exactly. The earth is the Lord's. Your stuff is the Lord's. You're the Lord's, which of course is a theme carrying into the New Testament that we're not our own. We were bought with well, a price. Right. Um, and again, I used this analogy this past weekend, but you know, anytime a rich person dies, this is always the question. You know, How much did they leave? And the answer is always the same, all of it. All of it. Exactly. Because it all belongs to the Lord. James says we're just a shadow, uh, just a, a dust in the wind, to quote Carrie Livgren in Kansas. Um, we are just a vapor, a mist. Right. And uh, But everything belongs to the Lord. And when you start with that foundation, that anchor, hey, my marriage belongs to the Lord, my, my house belongs to the Lord, my kids belong to the Lord, good or bad, Lord, they're yours first. This is yours. The house is yours. So whatever you want to do, it's yours. And it relieves a lot of pressure. Yeah. A lot of pressure. Because if it's God's, then he basically takes care of it. Right. Uh, well, and I don't. I can quit this idea that American culture has of collecting everything. Exactly. Yeah. You know, who gets the most toys, most houses, boats, right. cars, motorcycles, you know, whatever. Um, it's all the Lord's. So... Well, it's a foundational truth, and something, an argument you cannot move away from. And the Bible even says, says this, if the foundation is not solid, then nothing that's built on it is solid. And what we're looking at now is a crumbling foundation that at one time was very well laid. And for over 200 years, the United States prospered. God had their hand over them, and they were protected because of the foundation. We've moved from this foundation. America has been attacked on its own soil. Uh, family units, another foundational part of this world, falling apart. Everything is because when you lose verse 1, you lose everything. Right. Well, you take the Bible, you take it out of schools, and then, how do I say this kindly? Uh, often it's taken out of churches. It's only even if it is used, it's only yeah. used in a, a ritual sense. There's exactly. no teaching. There's no explanation. It's just a routine, a ritual. Um, again, you got to know the word. If you want to stand firm, you're going to have to know it. Well, it. It talks about even who can even go in the presence of God. Right. Because you have this uh, this theology that's out there because of a lack of Bible. Uh, everybody can pray and expect God to answer answer their prayers. Uh, just this weekend, won't mention the celebrity. Uh, celebrity's son died over an overdose. The quote was made, I've prayed and he's now in God's hands. What they don't realize is what kind of hands those could be. But it sounds good, and it will placate any hard, hurtful feelings, and it takes away any responsibility to why did that young kid die of an overdose. Right. So we don't have to have answer uh, to, to the, anything in life. We just go ahead and pray because we can ascend. No, according to here, you can't. Uh, what yeah. does it say? Clean hands. Who and a may pure ascend heart. the hill of the Lord? Clean yeah. hands and a pure heart. Which knocks out the perfection junk. Out there, guys, here is a red flag for me. I know it is for Joe. When we talk or we preach, don't email in. Don't tell us nobody's perfect. We understand that because we ourselves are not perfect. The Bible does not call for protection for perfection. It says just have clean hands and a pure heart, inward and outward. 
that means you walk blameless and you're not hoarding, as you were talking about, sin. As sin dirties your life, you seek forgiveness, you're walking before the Lord an imperfect person, but you're blameless because he has taken over through his blood your sin. Well, all right, let's talk about that clean hands and a pure heart. Um, if you haven't seen the movie Sounds of Freedom, you need to go see it. Uh, I got a little overwhelmed because <clears throat> for years, well, for 35 years, I have been a very strong advocate, as I know you have, Cliff, for pro-life. Uh, we have yelled it from the rafters, we've preached it, yeah. we've screamed it, uh, we've begged people uh, to understand life and the gift of life. And now uh, an, an equal story almost beside it is this thing about child trafficking, right. sex trafficking, slavery. Um, and so you need to go see the movie Sounds of Freedom. It's only going to be out a few weeks. And we're going to try to rent it eventually and get it in here. But for, you need to go see it. You need to support the, them, the guys that made it and fought to get it put up on the screen for you. Um, but... One of the things that Jim said at the end of the movie, Jim Caviezel, that is the star, he said, now you cannot say you haven't been told. You can right. never say again. I, I don't know it. I don't understand it. I didn't know that was going on. And so what do we do? And truly, if you know all this stuff's going on and you don't do anything, now what does that mean? Well, it could be volunteering. It could be praying. It could be giving. It could yeah. be all, the, all that. But... Listen, you can have dirty hands just by watching. Exactly. By standing by and doing nothing. You and I, you can be guilty of abortion. Um, God says to Ezekiel, if you don't tell them the truth, the blood's on you. And at one point, Ezekiel preaches and lays them out, and they say, why are you telling us all this? And he said, because now the blood's on you. Exactly. Now you're responsible for what you do with the information that God's given you. Well, again, accountability and responsibility are two things that do not fit in this new, what I'll call, world culture. No, everybody's, because, everybody's a victim. Because they you, makes you feel bad, and we shouldn't feel bad. And, th and this is not just happening. I can remember, I guess, 25, 30 years ago, there was a young lady in a major city that was raped and beaten, and over 150 people stood around and watched it from start to finish, walked off, and never called for help for this young lady and she died. This has been going on. You say, well, that's drastic. This is bloodthirsty. Uh, we're talking about life and death. Again, look at the movie. See what goes on with these children that are taken. Well, one of the quotes in the movie, and I'm not giving you a spoiler by any means because you'll hear this in the movie, but one of the quotes in the movie is, what if it were your daughter? Because yeah. the guy's being challenged about why would you go to all this effort? Why would you fight such a hard fight? And he said, what if it were your daughter? Yeah. We fight to, to do everything except to go into the presence of the Lord. Go into his presence. Uh, well, those that do go into the presence will receive the blessing from the Lord. Well, let's let's talk about verse 6, about seeking the six. face of God. Exactly. You're, you're, you're better at that than I am, so you lead that part. Well, it, it talks about a blessing from the Lord, and let me make something straight. Money is not always the blessing from the Lord. Uh, money can be a curse. Uh, too much stuff can be a curse. So we, we need to put aside this blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord simply means to walk in His favor. Uh, he directs our path. But then the verse you're talking about, this is the generation that seeks the Lord, who seek his face, the God of Jacob. The generation that is blessed. You simply seek the face of God. What, what does that mean? It's to seek to be in his presence, uh, in a, a person's face. I mean, when I came home late, did something wrong, uh, my mother with five sets of eyes uh, would always find out. <laughs> and all I had to do is walk in the house and look at her face and know 
Now, I don't know exactly what trouble it was. There was so much of it. But I knew I was she knew not. Eno she knew enough. She knew no enough to get me not wanting to see my dad when he came in. But again, the reflection, to see God's face, not just of blessing, but of understanding. Uh, to me, I think that is not talked about enough. It's not that God understands and he says, okay, you're weak, you can't do that. It's an encouragement of I've been there, I've done that, I know what you're going through. It's always good. It's always an encouragement to me. Just an arm around, come on, let's get that done. And when you constantly seek to be in the presence of the Lord, you're, you can't hide anything from God. And listen, you can be in the presence of God in your car. Exactly. We're not subway. talking about a place. Not, not at all. But I, I think there's, there's two things here. If you seek the face of God, you're only going to get two responses. Well, yeah. either, either way, you're going to go face down because, right. um, because he's God and we're um, little creations. We're not. Um, but you're either going to be in a position of royalty this is my savior, God, I'm here to honor you. Uh, or you're going to be under so much shame and conviction that you're not going to want to seek his face. But I also think it's no accident that David threw in that last phrase, seek the face, O God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. uh, because in David's times, no different than now, there's a duality of gods. There's right. a, a pantheon. Uh, you know, people are so think they're so smart. Well, which God do you you know worship Poseidon or do you worship uh, Satan? I mean, honestly, you're either worshiping Jesus, the true God, or you are worshiping, worshiping Satan. Worshiping a false God. Um, yeah. And but he's specific in saying that you seek the face of the God of Jacob. That would be Yahweh. That would be uh, the one the one true God. He he doesn't leave that ambiguous because he knew dumb people would come afterwards. Exactly. Well, not only that, if you look at the progression of the psalm, he starts off with a statement. The earth is the Lord's, everything in it, and all of us are. Who can go into the presence of God? People who are blameless, clean hands, pure heart. They'll receive the blessing of God, and a blessing will be is they will seek God and not run from him. That, that is a blessing to want to be in the presence. And, and then he goes up. This last picture here also, if you remember out there, we talked about this being messianic from the standpoint of the grave opening. Uh, the last verses of this psalm speaks of the return of Christ. It talks about the conquering heroes. If you've ever visited med medieval castles, they have these huge, thick doors. And some of them lift and they're they're letting the drawbridge down they're they're letting the doors open and the king is the first one that goes in because he leads his arm conquering army he leads all of the prisoners he leads everything this is a return from the battle so it is a picture down through the times when god Jesus Christ himself comes back to earth and sets up his kingdom. Yeah. Again, it lift up it's it's, it's a double refrain. Double. Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up you ancient doors, yeah. that the king of glory may come in. You got to you got to open the door. Exactly. Well, individually, a nation, your business, you have got to open the door. Even a church, you got to open the door. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle. Then he says it again, yeah. lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Again, it's meant to be sung. Right, it's so, a responsive lead. Yeah. Hey, I can and Cliff sing. and I love you enough that we we're not sing. gonna do that. No, we won't sing. Uh, we'll have Jerry put some recorded music. Yeah, there on. you go, yeah. there you go. But it's, it's something made to say, like a priest will ask the question, they answer. And it's, uh, a tri again, triumphant. And I think, let me throw this word on you. I think it's a double in Dante. Come on. Yeah, that means something. I've, I've had that at Starbucks. Have you? Is that with a cream? <laughs> 
<laughs> Tell them what that means. <laughs> Tell me what that means. I, I don't know. I saw that. No, I think it's a a double meaning. In other words, it mm. makes a statement, and then it comes back. And the second time it makes the statement, it has the impact to it. That's the double endante. I like that. Well, again, the call is for us to lift our heads. Yes. The call is for us to open the gates. The king's ready to come in. Whether it's into your life, Jesus is ready. But again, Jesus is the old statement. Jesus is a gentleman. Right. He won't force his way into your life. He won't force his way into your marriage. He won't even force his way into a church. No. <laughs> church has to invite him in. Exactly. Now, I will say this. He can make it rough on you if you don't. The circumstances of your life. Yeah, well, you yeah, you make your own. You make those by the again, it's choices. Uh, life is full of choices. Uh, to wherever good or bad, you you have a result of that choice. So don't finish this up. Well, again, I think if there's a prayer, you could just pray uh, nine and ten or yeah. seven, eight, nine, and ten. But Lord, help me to lift up, help me to lift up my head. Help me to open the gates so that the King of Glory can come in. And you may have to pray that prayer regularly. Lord, let the King of Glory come into my life. Lord, let the King of Glory come into my marriage. Let the King of Glory come into my business. Now, when you invite him in, you know, things are going to have to get cleaned up. That's right. You know, just... It's not business as usual. Right. So, anyway, we'll leave you with that. If you've been blessed, hit the button, uh, subscribe, like. Uh, share it with other people. That's how this works. Uh, about 900 folks uh, in our international audience. Right. It's very powerful. Um, so we're just blessed that you guys are willing to listen to two old men drinking coffee and uh, sharing our hearts. Thank you. We hope you have a great day. Have a great one. God, God bless, bless you guys. <laughs>